Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today is part three of our light bulb tutorial, and we're going to focus a lot on actually replicating the light bulb and setting up the scene, and also do a little work with compositing. All right, so as always, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and also subscribe here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's go here to solid, and let's drop this down here to our plane just above it and then hit R and we're gonna make it look like it's just kinda of laying on the ground so let's get up here and try to adjust this so that the both this point and this point are sitting on here so R and move it down that is almost good R again That looks pretty good, yeah, to me. Eh, not really. Around there is good. And so let's set up our camera view. So if you hit zero on your number pad and then hit the letter N as in nose, lock camera to view, hit N again. And this is where we kind of want to set everything up for our view. Uh, I'm going to take this, make sure this is selected, the light ball, hit, scale it down a little bit. All right, and also, here's where we're going to duplicate these things or replicate them. I uh, Shift D and then hit Z. No, sorry, X. Hit R and then hit Z. And that'll keep it on the ground. And we'll move it into place. We're going to have several oops no not that one sorry uh we're gonna have several of these right next to each other kind of and you can put you know put them however you want it's not that big of a deal we're gonna hit zero just to get out of there that camera view all right and you want to make sure things aren't like going into each other all right shift d i uh, will do x and pull it out here on the Y, hit R, Z. All right, we'll move these close together. Like that. Let's go back into camera view, see what this looks like so far. All right, we'll take this again, we'll duplicate this. And by the way, you wanna save your project periodically. All right, Shift D. And X, R, Z. I'm getting out of camera view, make sure things aren't touching. Back in. I uh, will duplicate another one. Shift D. And Y. Z. Oops, I hit Z by accident. I uh, G and then Z. No, sorry, X. R, Z. I'll put one like right there. And I think we'll do maybe one more. So Shift D, X, R, Z. It's easier to get out, make sure nothing is So if you have a slow computer, this render will take quite a while because we have a lot of stuff going on here. So let's hit zero. Hit five for pers oops, sorry. Yeah, we're in perspective. Okay, by default. All right, and uh, I'm going to make one more. So Shift D and Y. R, Z, and we'll move it over here at zero, make sure it's not touching anything, and it is, so. Z, 
zero. All right, that's good. All right, so let me zoom out just a little bit. I want basically an area for type that will go over here. All right, so now if we uh, just switch to rendered mode, we can get an idea. This is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I'm just going to hit zero, actually. And five for perspective. All right, pretty cool looking. So I'm gonna experiment with changing uh, the background here. So if we click over here to the world tab, we can change. We have a background color here. We can take that completely black and also take and hit right click for this plane surface. And if you're familiar with Photoshop at all, you know, this is kind of like your layers area. And so the plane is selected. So if we come over here, it doesn't even have a material. You also hit new and we'll leave it at diffuse and what we can do here is change by clicking this little picker thing over there, change it to a gradient texture. And that kind of changes, you know, the appearance of this. Um, and so what you can do is bring this out over here, take the node editor. I should have done it the other way so I have more space, but no, no big deal. We can shift A and put color mix RGB. Connect that right there. And then we can specify, you know, well, first I'm gonna change this to quadratic sphere. I kind of like that how that looked. I didn't expect it to do that though. Let me see here. Also, you can join these instead of right-clicking just by taking this and pulling it over. You know, I wasn't really planning on having it to be this dark, and I, I think it still is too dark, but um, let me... Yeah, I had to pause that just to think, you know, if this is really what I wanted, what I wanted to do. And so uh, I'm going to leave it at that. And what I want to do, though, is try to make one of them appear as though they're lit up which is going to play into the whole type that we put over here. Uh, okay, my kid's being loud. All right, so anyhow, let's go back here. I think the one I want to be lit, uh, you know, I think it's going to be this one. And so, actually, let me hit zero to see what this is. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back here to solid. So it would be this one that I want lit up. So I'm going to add inside of it, I should have done this before I started moving these around, but that's okay. I want to add inside of it a an emission plane in the form of like a cylinder that kind of goes the length of those, you know, those two arm things. So I uh, let's see here. Uh, first, I'm going to go to wireframe just so I can get an idea where those things are so it's kind of positioned like that okay so i'm going to left click to put the origin there i'm going to hit seven on the top three on the side it's basically where it will get added so i'm going to hit shift a mesh cylinder scale it down a ton and Right, just to look at where this thing's at. I didn't mean to do that, actually. Just take it on. Hit 5, so we're in ortho mode here. Hit R slightly on that axis. Scale this down a little bit more. All right. S and... Uh, that's fine. Yeah. 
If you hit S and then shift Y, Z, or X, that means it will only scale down on those two uh, axes. So I'm not sure which one to be. Shift Y, no. Shift X, or Shift Z. There we go. Of course, it's the last one I tried. All right, so you can see if we kind of rotate around, this isn't completely, oh man, I screwed that up. Mm, S and Y. There we go. Yeah, I, I just made life real difficult on myself by doing it this way. That's no big deal though. I mean, you're not gonna be able to tell because it's such a tiny detail. Uh, I'm just hitting R here. And that's pretty good, I think. All right, so now it's inside of it and let's give it uh, an emission. Let's see here. Color, we can change it like right around there. Strength, I'm, I'm gonna try 20. I have no clue what this is gonna look like. All right, so <laughs> don't hate me. All right, let's see. Let's go to, let's just get a rendered here. Uh, I'm going to hit five, get that out of the way. And I'm just kind of panning around. Basically, I really like it to kind of create a fuller, brighter emission, which I know I could do with Photoshop, but, I mean, if you can achieve it in here, you definitely... Let's just try to really increase that and see what happens. So I tried 60. I don't know. Let's try something insane like 300. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to do research to see how I can really make these things like it create like a more of a glow. Okay, basically an hour has passed since I unpaused this, try to figure out the best way to add the glow. And it turns out uh, doing it in the compositor seems to be the best way. At least that's what I found. And Andrew Price of BlenderGuru.com was the solution. So I basically followed step by step how to use the compositor and in order to create you know an effect that looked good here so that uh that video is right here actually uh so yeah that's just a quick shout out he's taught me a lot of stuff i am still a newbie all right so here's how we do it basically we want to find that i uh, i think it's cylinder for me it's cylinder 007 i should probably rename these but anyhow, it's uh, that is our little glow emission thing. We know it is here because of uh, the material property. Uh, so basically what we need to do is move that to its own layer. So the way you do that is hit M on your keyboard, and this little thing pops up, and then you just uh, click on the second one right there. Very simple. All right, so then we come over here. And this is the scene tab, I guess you could call it. And you have all these things out here. So by default, you have this render layer. Everything is uh, like selected right here uh, is only going to take, it's going to basically render every single layer. So we only wanted to uh, render this first one. So that means it will render everything except for that emission thing. Uh, so we want to add another one and we'll call this scene. No, actually, we'll call it glow, glower, whatever. <laughs> and then we, uh, I'm pretty certain, yeah, we we take this and just select the second layer. Yes, right there. Uh, and I think that would be good to go. All right, so once you've done that, I uh, and it, it looks and it acts like that. So what we want to do is render it now based on, you know, the final render settings. And so I'm going to come down here real quick for performance, change these tiles to 256 by 256. 
And then also the samples, where are we at? For render, I, I'm gonna choose 1500. All right, and so I'm going to click render. Uh, let me go in camera view just to see what we have going, okay? Uh, let me adjust this slightly. All right, and then I'm just gonna hit render. And this is gonna take a while, so I'm going to pause. Okay, so here is the result. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. Uh, but again, we want this part to be, you know, to glow a little bit more. So here's how we do that. Basically, now that uh, we have it rendered, we wanna switch here to compos compositing view. All right, and if we click use nodes, we will see uh, these two things come up. All right, so this is gonna get massive. <laughs> Basically, kind of just going uh, this, using the same steps that uh, Andrew Price basically used uh, in that video that I showed you. So basically we want to cut this connection and yours uh, should have this down here, render layer and glower. So if you switch to glower, you see this tiny little thing right there. Um, so let me go back here, leave that at render layer. And so we'll take this, hit shift D move it down right here or wherever you want rather and we will choose glower for this so it's basically on its own layer and what we want to do is add a couple of different things i guess uh, nodes i guess you could call them to this to, so that we can make it glow specifically all right so if we hit shift a and we go to filter blur and put it like right around here and connect this to there or rather being slow I'm sorry <laughs> it's right here this to there all right so we want to change this to let's see the X and the Y which is basically the size of the glow to uh, yeah he had 150 and it worked well for my scene as well so 150 by 150. So now you can see right there, you kind of have this preview of like this outer glow area. And if you wanted to view it like in this area up here, I uh, hit shift A, output, and you put in viewer. And my kid is being really loud outside. And connect that up. And now we can see, you know, basically what this glow will look like. All right, so uh, we could also make a more uh, more intense inner glow by adding another blur. So shift A, filter, blur. And basically we need to get this thing connected from here down back over here. All right, so you can add as many of these things as you want basically. Uh, and you could change this to fast Gaussian if you want. And we can make the size of this one 15 by 15. All right, so you can see it's more of an intense uh, view right there. And you can, uh, you can also add, let's see here, put this down here. Let me take this viewer off delete it you can also add it's so over here color RGB curves connect it to the image portion right there and this will adjust the intensity of the image let me see here if I add a viewer to this output viewer and then put it backdrop so you can see how intense, you know, you can basically adjust the intensity. Uh, I think I'll leave it there for now. All right, and this, you know what? I think that's a little bit too bright. I'm gonna go down to 10, not bright, but I want it to be smaller rather. So if we added a viewer here, oops, cut that connection and add this over here. We could see that that is 
a little bit more bright there. I may even make it smaller. Five. All right. All right, so then I, uh, let's see here. What else do I want to do? We can add, I uh, can add another thing that we can, a node that we can connect this. I call it a glare, shift A, filter, glare. Temporary, I'm gonna move it up here just so I can see. Take this and connect it over here. And if we put a viewer on it, so we'll just cut this connection by hitting control, put this back over here. We can see what a glare does. And by the way, this is basically a uh, word for word um, video of what Andrew Price was doing uh, by adding this glare. But basically, you can adjust these uh, to really change it up quite a bit. Um, so let me see here. Iterations, I think five, um, five is the max. Uh, you have the angle offset, which I don't think is really doing anything. Fade is something that, you, uh, for our purposes, probably dropped down pretty low, right around there. All right, all right. So basically we have all those hooked up. And now what we wanna do, all right, so now to bring everything together, you go to Shift A, color and mix and we will take now remember we have three different things going on here so we'll take uh, this and plug it in to this top image portion and take our blur and do the same thing all right and we'll go ahead because I uh, we only have, yeah, first of all, we want to change this mix here to screen on this first one. So, yeah, if I could find it, what am I doing? Right there. All right. And the reason you do screen, uh, as you can see, I kind of updated it there. Uh, basically, if you're familiar with Photoshop at all, you know, you have layer blend modes, and it's the same thing for this. Uh, so this will just kind of add on this entire image and make it, you know, this background black portion, just like transparent basically. Uh, but you can experiment and we probably will uh, anyhow. So we take this and we want to duplicate and create another mix just to get our third one uh, it, it basically connected because we had three of these things. So uh, we could take this, Shift D, and we take this in the top portion and then get our other one that is way down here and let's get rid of that viewer and plug it into this bottom one. All right. And this can be screen as well, although I may have to adjust that based on, you know, what it looks like. All right, so now that we have that, now we need to get everything I uh, kind of just get these two basically connected. And so this is the basically the, the last node. So uh, we have to add another mix. So we can just go hit shift D here. Put this here, connect the top one to this portion, and then also take this one and connect it there. And now you can see just barely that it's glowing. And then finally, uh, if we want to add a viewer here, input viewer, or output viewer rather, put that in there and then hit backdrop All right, and I can't really. Yeah, just to make this bigger, I think it's control up. Yeah, up arrow key. That way we can actually see everything. Uh, so that's kind of an issue that's created right here. Uh, I found that just experimenting with these to see how that changes anything. Uh, I think it was, where is it? Dodge possibly? There. All right, and then basically what we do uh, is also take this and just put it into the composite right there. 
All right, so if you want to save this, uh, what you do is hit Control and then the up arrow key again. And we'll change this to Viewer Node, then hit F3, and that's where you would save it as your PNG and hit Save Image. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that. And, you know, I actually came up with a different idea uh, for this poster. <laughs> Uh, basically, I'm not going to show this. It's going to be very simple. Uh, you would probably already know how to do it if you did everything else. I'm just going to take this center portion and change it to like a circle A. And you'll see when we get to the portion of Photoshop or whatever where the type comes through. It, it would just fit the idea of this image a lot better. All right, so I, I'm going to go ahead and basically... I, yeah, I'm going to conclude here for today. I, w I wanted to get it done today, but the kids are going crazy, and it's just going to be a little bit more time. We're already at 25 minutes. So, basically, I, yeah, we're going to conclude tomorrow uh, and really come up with a, a cool image, and I think it's going to be something that uh, it's going to be shared on, on Facebook quite a bit. I'm a, a, an admin of a few pages that would probably find entertainment out of this image. All right, so uh, I will see you tomorrow. All right, goodbye.